All right, I am sitting here now outside the Pearson Center about to go in and take my National Registry Paramedic exam again. I'm Dan Limmer from Limmer Education. Why do I do this? Well, I want to be able to have taken that new exam. I want to be able to tell you what it's like when I teach you. I want to have the experience. Now, I've been a paramedic for a fair amount of time and I've been preparing people for this exam for a fair amount of time. But you know what? I'm sitting here and I'm still a little bit nervous going in. I'm nervous because being the exam prep guy, if I fail, it'd be really embarrassing. But I'm also a little bit nervous and I think that's normal because it's a high stakes exam. It means something. And if you're going in, if you've taken a year of your life to become a, a paramedic and everything depends on this exam, yeah, it's going to be okay to be nervous, but use that energy, channel it positively, go in and do well. All right, a couple more thoughts before I go in to take this exam right now. I'm not stalling, honest, although I do admit I'm a little bit nervous that in this paramedic exam, I'm going to get a minimum of 110 questions. That's more than I got last time. Last time I took the test, 80 was the minimum. I got out of the out the door in 80. I think I rocked it. It was good. Now it's 110. But don't freak out about the number of questions. If you go to 111, that's okay. Just keep answering questions to the best of your ability. And remember class, the questions may start getting more difficult and that's actually a good sign. 20 of the questions you get are not gonna count. They're pilot items. I want you to think about that too. You get a weird question, move on. Nobody gets 100 on the National Registry. Don't freak out. These are things I'm gonna remember when I'm going into that test center right now and again, I'll tell you how it goes, or at least how I think it goes when I come out. All right, I finished the National Registry exam. I drove home. I got to do a little bit of a debriefing here. So here's my first observation of the exam. Take your time. I took about a minute per question. I sat down at the exam. Bam, first question out of the chute was a clinical judgment scenario, 12 questions. I would have preferred a little bit more of a ramp up. I didn't get that. That's okay. I have no say in that matter. Finish the 12 questions of the first clinical judgment scenario. Bam, another clinical judgment scenario. So the first 20 to 25 questions were all in that ongoing scenario format. They were pleasant. They made clinical sense. The choices were reasonable. They had TEI items within them. For example, the multiple response and a couple of drag and drop kind of things in there. And that wasn't so bad. But think about it. I got, fortunately, the minimum number of questions, 110 questions on paramedic. But I took two hours. That was a minute per question. The first thing I want to say is I want you to take your time and read that. I saved myself from choosing the wrong thing, going a little bit too quickly, and I stopped and went over it. In the clinical judgment scenarios, don't be bashful to go back, click on if you're in, in uh, if you're in the post scene and you want to think about, she didn't we do that already? You go back to the scene, do it. Take your time. Why do you do it and take your time like that? Because if you get more questions right, you get fewer questions. It's very rare to run out of time. I had more than an hour left with really only the potential for 40 questions. I was going to be totally fine. These are just perceptions. Obviously, I didn't keep track. I was focusing on the exam, but I really think that I felt like I had about 25 or 30 percent of the questions as multiple response items. Choose two of five, choose three of six. There were a ton of those. Inside the clinical judgment scenario, sometimes it seemed like there were all those, and then getting individual questions as well. So the multiple response items, two of five, three of six, are really, really big on the exam. I'll also say that I would estimate 20, 25% of the questions really could have been on an EMT or an AEMT exam, right? The questions you always have to have a BLS component, what you do, even at the paramedic level. So there were a fair number of those questions on there as well. The questions I thought were, as an educator, they were very well created. They weren't ambiguous at all. Um, that whole concept that there used to be the, look for the most correct answer. They're all correct, but um, one's gonna be most correct. I didn't see any of those. Now that doesn't mean the questions aren't challenging. The questions, in fact, are very challenging, and they did seem to get a little bit harder as I went on. Fortunately, I stopped at 110 questions. I stopped at the minimum as far as that goes. 
but be prepared for a lot of those multiple response, some of the TEIs, clinical judgment. I really want you to take your time. All right, one of the things I found about several of the questions, and I've been teaching this for a long time. I read the question, usually I try and read the question twice. Have you noticed I'm saying take your time a lot? And you read the question, you go, okay, well, I think the answers would be this and this. It's a choose two of five. I say, well, in this situation, I think I'd do this and this. So I look through the list and one of them's there, but the other one isn't. Then you're saying, oh, then you have to go through and look. And one of the things about the National Registry exam is there's not a lot of dumb distractors in there. Every one of the choices has a little bit of choosability. So then you've got to go through and say, the other one I want isn't there, which is the best one? Now, a couple strategies for doing this. One is you may say, okay, I, mine isn't there, but this one really makes sense. But the other thing I'll say is that you'll be able to go through and that there are only two correct answers. The other ones are gonna be wrong. Sometimes you look back at the question and you see, oh, the lungs are clear, you say, well, I can scratch out these, or you get an example of, oh, the patient's alert, and whatever it happens, you can rule some of them out. But don't get freaked out if there are two hallmark things that you're always taught about a particular clinical disease. Again, I can't say specifics. But if both of those aren't there, there is another correct answer there. And I want you to look for it. I want you to take the time and look for it. And if you find the one that you know is there, you can click on that. And you're not sure what the other one is. There's nothing that stands out. Then go from it at a reverse angle. Then say, all right, I know this one's not right. And I know this one's not right. And then you work it down to two and you're thinking, all right, now that I've got this narrowed down, you can go through and figure it out. So that was one of the things I noticed probably in three questions that the two choices that I wanted in the multiple response weren't there, but I was able to go through and I was able to work that out. Don't freak out if the choice you want isn't there. There is another one. There is a right one there, but you've got to take your time and figure it out. All right, another observation about the National Registry. You're going to have a clock on the screen. That clock is there to help you do not obsess about the time. Now, I've talked a lot about time, probably more than anything else uh, after this exam experience, all right? So I've talked about it a lot, I, I get that. It's a guide. Don't time yourself on every question. Don't freak out about it. Because while I had a lot of multiple response items that took more time, and the clinical judgment scenarios took more time, I had four of those overall. Now I'm guessing, at least one of those was probably a pilot item. I don't, can't say for sure, but it probably was. But then there's other times you get a straight multiple choice question. I had operations questions. I had you know, simple questions, uh, whether it be a pharmacology thing or a lifespan, any number of, any topic that's not um, the crazy six sentence clinical scenario. They're not gonna take you a minute. You're gonna go through and you're gonna answer those more quickly. So you make up that time. All I did was I knew that I was averaging about a minute per question, and I had plenty of time, right? The National Registry expanded the amount of time you have for this. Do not freak out. Do not think you're going to run out of time. Running out of time is actually relatively rare in this. Take the time to read the question, read the question again, look at the choices, maybe you pick one, go back and look and you say, oh, eh, this is about lungs or this about, you know, whatever, so I can rule this out. You know, this is, I found that when I was looking to rule out some of the distractors, especially in the multiple response, if I look back at the question, especially in the ongoing scenarios, those clinical judgment scenarios, the answer was there it would tell me something that would make one of those choices totally invalid. But you've got to take the time and put it all together in your head. All the answers are there. They're given to you. But you've got to be able to go through and go back and work that out.